blessed? Okay, we have to stop this to recording. Me. Stupid. Right. Oh, oh no, okay, it, yeah, it, it totally didn't... stopped on ours. All right. Oh, it right. said welcome to, and then it stopped. That's right, it. I'm gonna we got nothing. Hit stop on Sorry. the record. Let me see because I've got it locally on the computer here. I just have to open it. Oh, we were like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> We had some okay. funny jokes in there too. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was playing the whole time for me. Of course. It did not. That's why we said, what is going on here? And we reset All the right. modem even. I know. I may I wrote myself a well, note. And Chrissy was on just you. It was like special Chris only Giga Blast. Which doesn't usually happen. Hey, one thing I noticed, I, I popped up this show from last week or the week before or something like that. And um it is recording on speaker only instead of full tiles. Yes. I do that. I prefer speaker only. Okay. I, I know you guys hate it. Well, I just feel like the other ones of us do stuff that's funny sometimes in the background and that's all. But anyway, I, it, fine, fine. No problem. As long no, no, if, if no. that is an intentional choice, great. Let's roll with it. Uh, you checking. know what? I completely missed the part about people do funny stuff. So, all right, we'll go. This one's going to be in gallery. All right. Am I recording? I am not recording. Oh, you are, I am recording. Somebody's recording. Oh, yeah. All right. I am recording. Oh, this is like the worst intro ever. Okay, so now I go to share screen. <laughs> this is a little extreme. I go to share screen. Should we stop this and you know start a new one? Because nah, I'll I'll edit it and it'll get even funnier sure. there. Okay, and then uh, okay. make sure it's share with sound. Yeah, I got our whole uh, GM rant last week that I'm gonna put in stories. Welcome to Everyone Racers, There's a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur and girls racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy, Chrissy, and Chrissy, and I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. And I'm mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to a Skoda episode of our podcast. Ooh. It's episode 293. Believe it or not, in 1958, the Czechoslovakian state-owned Skoda Auto produced a pair of stunning open-top two-seat cars with a, with a high top speed for the 100 and or see 1100 overhead cam race top speed was 250 kph skoda actually made a series of prototype road and race cars during the 50s through 70s but the communist czech government wouldn't allow them to produce them as they were too modern mm. can't have that hey if you're not driving your uh, cold war behind the iron curtain 50s era open top long hood roadster check out our bingo card this thing actually looks cool like, it's I had quite no the car yeah Wow. If, if anyone wants to share a screen, we can throw that on there for the YouTube. But well, I'll put a link to the Google uh, it. Just this. Google it. Just yeah, go, Google Skoda yeah. Skoda two ninety three. Nice. Yeah. Wow. No idea. Wow. Who knew? Who knew? Fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's time for what you're working on. I know what Mental. Chrissy's working on, so I got to ask Mental. Mental, what are you working on? I, I've I've been actually almost busy this week. Uh, <laughs> Almost. Right. Yeah. Uh, Friday, um, we did a kind of going away retirement for the guy that I'm replacing at work. Uh, so I'm taking over his responsibilities. It doesn't come with an extra paycheck, but it does come with a reserved parking spot. Um, so uh -huh. when I get back to work next week, I'm going to park the Porsche in there, make sure it dumps a bunch of oil. And that way everyone knows <laughs> it's fine. Um, it's fair. And uh, out of nowhere, Sun or Monday night, it actually was Monday night. Uh, I had drinks with an alien on Facebook Messenger. I got a, a, a message from Santiago, our oh, buddy fantastic. Daniel Santiago, oh. the, uh, the, the super iRacer alien, uh, automotive tester, uh, rally guy extraordinaire. And yeah. uh, he was, uh, they had just come from Arizona doing some of his work. And uh, he's like, oh, hey, I forgot you live in Vegas. And then, uh, yeah, we ended up hanging out and uh, great stuff. Uh, good time Excellent. with him. So I showed him some of the off strip sites that, you know, are our go tos when we got mm -hmm. folks here. And uh, it, for those watching on YouTube, you'll notice that this is not my normal under construction background for I am in a hotel room. I am at uh, Naval Air Station, North Island, 
just outside of San Diego, really actually across the bay because I'm on Coronado Island uh, for a work trip, which, uh, you know, San Diego's actually been pretty nice. The weather here is good. I got to go see uh, uh, the uh, La Jolla Independent BMW here in San Diego. It's the one of the guys on the race team that I run NASA and uh, the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill with, and he has got amazing BMWs there. It is, and then uh, ended up having dinner with him and then after a few drinks, just ended up staying at his place, getting up at five o'clock in the morning and then running back over here to my hotel room and <laughs> getting ready for a series of very, actually they were interesting uh, meetings, but no one listening to the show will care about what they were about. So yeah, you think that. they're interesting. That's all. That yes. Is. So that, that has been, that has been my existence. Now, Chris cool. knows what Chrissy was working on, but I have no well, I idea. Just, I just want to ask how the drive down in the auto was. You know, through the, I mean, a lot of actually, nothing at some times, but you know, yeah, uh, uneventful. Actually, re- the the car is surprisingly good on a long haul. Uh, it, it's it's obviously not the Mercedes, but it's only just me. The only time I noticed it was not the Mercedes is you know when I tried to really get around somebody. It doesn't have that punch, uh, <laughs> but also you know I never had that. You know, oh, I look down and I'm accidentally doing 120 kind of a moment. You'll know that in a Miata really quick. Yes, there was yeah. um, a chunk up on the high plains where the wind was knocking it around. And you, I was reminded it was a little car, but it was just nothing that was unmanageable. Other than that, it was a very pleasant, uh, Great. pleasant drive. Coming hey. out of the mountains, uh, you know, a lot of curvy bits. And suddenly I got a tire pressure warning uh, because Coming down from 2,000 feet in Las Vegas and a spirited drive, all of my tires were at 40 PSI. Yeah. So I pulled yep. over and let a few pounds out of that. Exciting. <laughs> and hey, you got to drive a Miata around La Jolla, which is, La Jolla is one of the prettier parts of this country, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've driven it across the uh, the Coronado Bridge a couple times now already. Yeah. This is a this is actually a good place for that car. Totally. Great. But traffic is very California. Mm, yep. Mm, yes. Awesome. So again, Chris. No, it's no problem. Uh, it's nothing interesting, actually. So uh, I did yard work. Chris will talk to you more about my Saturday yard work. Uh, I cleaned the porch off. We have a lovely porch that's actually right behind me that you don't see right now. Um, that is a screen in porch that we keep all the furniture out and it just gets disgusting over the winter and the spring. So the pot was just layer of pollen. It was disgusting. So that takes a lot of work. Uh, I did that all day Saturday. And then I uh, saw a friend on Sunday and I put all of the evidence of gear, race gear away. Everything is back in the closet. So we no longer live in uh, the times after a race. Yes. Mental. I know your affinity for power washing. Was is it an old school scrub down or did you bust out a, the power wash? Nope. No, the power washer didn't come out. It's uh it was just yeah. And that's okay because I think if I power wash anything, I think we would take all of the finish off the deck. So I I it's probably best that we don't do that. I just needed to get the grime off. Um so it was good. And then I and then I don't know why. I decided to listen to my own video, uh, welding video. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty accurate. So I was uh, listening to it while Chris was welding and I was like, mm, my sound compared to what's coming at, what's going on out the door. Pretty accurate. Yep. Which I think is one of the comments underneath yeah, that video it is, is, it is this really does sound like TIG welding. Uh-huh. Yep. So that's why I was like, oh, I just decided, let me go listen to that video while I'm listening to the actual welding. So Chris was welding. Tell us about that. I, I did some welding, but the reason Chris, she didn't do the uh, pressure washers because I was working on the pressure washer because it was small engine oh, Saturday. Right. So the the pressure washer is actually the neighbors. He never uses it. We use it. So I feel obligated to maintain it, which as one does, right? Which they appreciate. So, right, last time That's I used karma. it, the plastic, the plastic pull handle broke off in my hand. So I put a new one of those on. And I also noticed the fuel line was come, was about to fall off. So I put a new one of those on. Um, and then uh, our Honda mower wasn't working. I end up, it ended up having a stuck intake valve because it had sat for 10 plus years at the Cape and something gummed it up. So I take the valve cover off. This lawnmower is actually an overhead cam lawnmower with a timing belt next to the cams in the head. It's a little plastic cam and it actuates these rocker arms directly on the valves and you can pull the rocker arms up. Just a little pin comes off, but um, freed the valve back up, clean those up on both sides. I actually had to do a valve adjustment. It's very Honda. Got that done. Um, put it back together, a new carb and runs great didn't run before so which is good because then we gave our uh old mower that no longer self-propelled to a friend 
Um, I have now finished the beach cart. Yay! It is, it, it, well, not it's 99.9% finished. I'm missing four stainless steel bolts that I have to go buy to hold the upper chair holding a frame to the, to the cart, but it is done. It is together. It operates electrically. The speed is correct. The direction is correct. The charger works. The USB port works. The wiring is all done and neat and zip tied and the controllers in a waterproof box and it's done. Yay. Which is really nice. And that Sunday really I flew cool. the plane a bunch. Got four the final bunch because you've had challenges getting some hours sure. your last couple of times. Four point two on the Hobbs. So twelve I mean, logbook. Uh well I mean that's usually what you go off of is on the hops. Um I but I then didn't know I got... they were all yours. Yeah. No, no, yes, they were all mine. And uh twelve takeoffs and landings. Holy crap. How many How three states? different airports? Four, um three different uh, states? Well, we flew over You started in Maryland. States. You we started in Maryland. Uh, we flew over West Virginia. I flew right over Summit Point, actually. <laughs> They're like, oh hey, there's Summit Point. Um, and then flew over flew down into Virginia a bit and then back up. We went to Martinsburg Airport, which is a, a an Air National Guard base too. So it has a, a two mile long runway, which is hilarious yes. in a Cessna 150. <laughs> so, I, I believe they fly C 17s out of there. Yeah. Big yeah. cargo four engine thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh yeah. So that that giant runway in a Cessna 150, it it was a challenge actually because I'm used to smaller runways and the runway is so big it changes your perspective on landing. Like you're coming in, you're and I was flaring too early because well I got to be there because look up look up here. Right? Yep, nope. Uh, so that was different, but glad to get the good good solid meaty chunk of time in the plane. How many uh, touch and goes were you able to do on one chunk of the Martinsville runway? I mean, if, if we had tried, we probably could have done three easily. <laughs> like. Yeah, like we probably could have done three full stops and back up again. You know, in a 150. Fair, yeah. That kind of stuff happens. I just uh same deal, you know, years ago when I was flying uh the out of out of Offit, they fly a militarized 747 out of there. So the runway is but I started that and I was used to a big runway. And then my uh instructor would love to throw uh things at me, you know, make me go to um, grass strips and things that were the size of, you know, you wouldn't even autocross on this road because it's too narrow. Yeah. And it was always, but yeah, I could get on a good windy day. I could get three touch and goes. Yeah. I think I've told that story, but yeah. That's about right. Yeah. Anyway, That's getting better. Cool. Getting better. All right. Uh, and yes, Jeff is still not here. I did speak with him. Uh, we, we got, I got to catch up with him. He is fired up with this. If he was here, you would check the box that he's working too much because it, um, he's just getting ready with like the formals and then, in, uh, kicks off, um, like the, Busy the graduation yeah. Yeah. and then come end of May, he's free again. And he is actually, uh, also boy scout camping this weekend. So good. Jeff Thanks is, for doing the news and notes or, um, excuse me, what you're working on for Jeff. <laughs> yes. Yep. So, so yeah, Jeff, good. Jeff promises he's coming back. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. It's news and notes time! Climate change activists have disrupted a number of large events in Europe, but they may have lost the forest for the trees. Uh, Reuters and other outlets reported this past Sunday that the formula E race in Berlin, that's electric car racing, but I just want to say that was delayed as climate processors climbed fences and sat in front of cars lined up on the starting grid. What? Yeah. It's FAA sanctioned so zero dumb. emission all electric world championship. You're so dumb. So the race was started after a brief delay and was won by New Zealander Nick Cassidy after starting eighth. It's, they don't know. It's there's a car race. We're gonna go sit in the we're gonna protest. Uh. Oh it's oh oh Sorry, I I, 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 I <laughs> do not so mean dumb. to sound dismissive or unsafe, but you know the worst race in the world to try a stunt like that would be any NASCAR oh, race. A, oh, 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 yeah, okay. The two For worst races, yeah. <laughs> the two worst races to do that. The, but another one would be the lemons race. You know, yeah, you know, buddy. I just spent seven hours up all night replacing this engine. This car is moving in 30 seconds. If you're in front of it or not, I don't care. I've hit, I've hit bigger things harder than you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And then of course, I think the, the other thing, somebody would just come out there and like, look, dude, I'll give you two beers. If you just move real quick, you know, <laughs> we'll let you protest, but we I have- might even give you like a snack. Like we've or, got, you yeah, know, you got they'll, they'll roll grills that into- going over there. If they if they can somehow find a way to employ them, they've got an HMG theme right there. <laughs> Keep the protesters <laughs> around all weekend. <laughs> Say they're with your team. Oh, yeah. there you oh go. I like I'll it. Make a, I'll make a great donation to your crew if you just say you're with car 37. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and hassle awesome. everyone all weekend. Got it. Go. <laughs> especially, especially car 22, because I hate that car. But <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, Moving on. All right. A few months ago, we told you about the Corvette E-Ray, which is the electrically assisted new C8 Stingray, and it is officially the quickest Corvette ever. And it is also the first production Corvette banned by the National Council of Corvette Clubs. Now, before you go and roll your eyes and dismiss this as one of those okay boomer situations, Kyle Smith, former guest over at Haggerty, tells us their reasoning is actually based on the potential dangers regarding the battery packs. Not not unfounded in the wake of all those EV bolt fires. In fact, Summit Point Motorsports Park in West Virginia that Chris flew over recently put a tactical pause on hybrid and electric vehicles, quote, purely based on ensuring we establish an EMS response policy and procedure based on technical knowledge provided by the electric and hybrid electric vehicle industry community. So until some responders can come up with a safe response, because everything you would fight a normal fire with doesn't work on an EV, you can actually expect this trend to continue. And with Summit Point in particular, they are in the middle of nowhere. They have to be self-sufficient. It's not like they can count on a local metropolis. Uh They have to like air air flight somebody out of there if something happens. What happens with some of these when they catch fires, like you can't really put them out. Water doesn't really put them out. So you just kind of, kind of let it burn sometimes without catching everything else around it on fire or damaging it and and they burn at hot a, yeah like like you know obviously they burn at fire but they burn at like metal melting yeah. temperatures uh, yeah. which ruins a racing surface real quick mm-hmm. so right. yeah I, I can see why should off into the grass fun. just be like you know sure. that that bonfire over there just let's go have fun over there that sounds great yep. drink your warm zimas over next to the bonfire after the race Sorry, we saw, uh, we saw that at some point. Oh, no, many, no, many, many no, that moons old, ago. That was an old reach back. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, All right. All right. I wasn't drinking the worms here, just to make sure we're clear. Um, okay, so the F1 Sprint made its, de- uh, its debut back in 2021 with the original format, seeing qualifying shifted from to Friday and setting the grid for a new 100-mile kilometer dash on Saturday, which in turn, so this is, I, I probably should preface this. I really wanted to know about the F1 Sprint race and the sprint showdown or whatever. So this is the information about this uh, that's happening this weekend. So uh, it's so the new dash on Saturday, which in turn determined determined the starting order for the main event on Sunday. However, tweaks for this year's means F1 Sprint is effectively becoming a standalone feature of race weekends when the format is used, with the outcome bearing no impact on the grid for the Grand Prix itself. Friday will now include FP1 session and stand standard qualifying session to set the grid for Sunday's Grand Prix, while Saturday will include a continuing 100 kilometer race, kilometer, kilometer race with an additional preceding qualifying session called the Sprint Shootout. The shootout will be shorter session with traditional qualifying and it replaces the uh, previous FP2 seen on Saturday morning of Sprint Weekends. Given that the F1 sprint is now contained within the race weekend, any incidents will not be uh, will not compromise starting positions for the Grand Prix. Drivers uh, should have more incentive to push across the 100 kilometer kilometer race, which usually lasts about a half an hour. So, like I said, I was confused about what this is. So basically, it sounds like there is a Saturday race itself, Friday, FP1 Quali that goes to Sunday. And then Saturday is a separate there's Saturday is a separate quality, separate little quality and then separate sprint race. That's what I'm yeah. gathering. 
Hmm. So because okay. my coworkers were asking me about it, I've seen all kinds of articles that I didn't open before now. And I was like, I need to understand what exactly is happening this weekend. So that's what I got directly from F1. Go look it up. If you think I'm wrong, let me know. But that's directly from F1. So I'm pretty I sure. I hope that means I get a bonus race uh, at the end of next month when I find myself in the Principality of Monaco. That uh, that should be interesting. I We're going to go off topic, but the show that inspired today's topic, I was listening to that, and they've instituted a similar thing in the World Superbike. And what they have noticed is the aggression of a sprint race is carrying over to the actual race. And they're losing a sizable, like 25% of the competitors due to uh, accidents and, and wadding stuff up. I, I want, well, I wonder if that's going to happen in F1. That's a, it's a real possibility. I, I reckon that is, hmm. I could see that. Um, the people that are going to fix said cars hope that there is not carnage on Saturday because then they have a long, they have a lot to do um, to, for, for the Sunday race. I do yeah. know that um, in this article, they did talk about the points and you still get points for shootout. It just doesn't affect how you, I didn't, this was already long enough. So um, yeah, you, I think it does give you some, they do give you points, but it doesn't affect the like quality, like where you sit on this, the grid on Sunday. So and I wonder how it affects like the amount of, you know, power units and other parts that you have a limited number of, I don't uh, know over this season. Yeah, that would uh, be I don't know. We'll look into it and we'll see how much carnage we have for this week. Um, and Hydra see, Bajan. you know, how, if there's only half the grid starts, they might say we probably <laughs> should fix this for next time. Yeah. Or, you know, Max starts complaining because he got bashed into because they wanted to wad his car up. Sure. <laughs> You're right. Everybody goes at him on Saturday. So he doesn't start on Sunday. It's it's a possibility. And then how yes. many people start from the grid lane? I mean, it's it'll be interesting. But um, this shootout is is definitely something different because we've seen sprint races. And that was kind of just like a long practice kind of thing. But it mattered. It was like long quality. Like you it mattered where you ended on whatever. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yes. Not true it, wheel to wheel. Yeah, that's what it sounds like this time. Okay, let's move on. I was perusing uh, through Racing Junk this week and started getting into the weeds of what's on the site. I did that a bunch this week. Uh, and it so some of it's not as popular as we think it should be. So road racing, road racing is categorized under uh, other racing, but that's okay, whatever. So it still has place, but it still has a place on the site, which is great. So as I peruse the classifieds, I found this place, the section for lemons and chump cars uh, and parts, which I didn't realize. So as of today, uh, they had a few chassis, uh, fo a Focus and a 944 and a seat. And Mental is showing you through the couple seats. Yes, this vintage racer is definitely a, ch a champ car. Um, not sure how much it's posted here, but it's another outlet for you to look for your next car or part that you need. So you should check out the classified sections, which we'll be talking a little bit more about in our main topic today, racing junk.com all right always a good place to just get lost on the internet love it you totally. should and if you were watching this on youtube you notice we were logged in under our professional account which oh gets us, i didn't notice yes should we want to we get five ads 50 photos per ad you know who's watching your items you got a dashboard you get to see early ads before anyone else does you get a discount in the store it's all kinds of cool stuff Woo. all right Chrissy, next oh, section. Yes. Uh upcoming races. There weren't any. There are none. Not this week. All right. Sorry. Race of results. <laughs> okay, there were a couple of races this week, but all we care really is about CMP. So uh winning is Buzz Viking Brewing nine in their 94 Lexus SC. Uh they were 10 laps over. The second place was Lee Ho Fook Racing. B went to a shit you not racing, and they ended up in fifth in a cobalt. Of know. all things. Yeah. Damn. And uh, six went, they were in, or, excuse me, sixth place was Class C. Their winner, the winner Whoa. there uh, is It'll Be Fine in a 93 Eagle Summit wagon. That's fantastic. Yeah. And that car is, I mean, it's well driven, but it's not fast. Quite it's a an Eagle run. Summit wagon, of course not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just out there just turning laps. Now, your ILE was zip tied racing in a 1968 Dodge Dart Daytona thing. Organizer's choice was Faux Lauren. 
racing in a 1983 Mitsubishi Starion. All right. It is a very Mitsubishi uh, centric uh, field down there. Judge's choice was Mustang Express in not a Mustang, but in 1985, Mercure X Ratty. And I got screwed as he often does with Sputnik in a doesn't 91. Always, doesn't Nissan always win Century. though. So no, no, he's, but he's often, he's often screwed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, worthless trivia, but Hillary. Uh, who normally runs on that team is actually out here on the West coast and through her professional connections met up with the team principal that I run the 25 hours of Thunder Hill with and has refueled us at NASA sprint races out here. Hmm. One of those six degrees of mental work. <laughs> of six I was going to out- say four degrees of just racing idiots anywhere you yeah. go. Oh, okay. That's true. I was going to add Sasha into this whole mix here. You yeah. know, the four to five degrees of Sasha. Go ahead. All right, so the eBay Motors Heroic Fix went to O-Town Racing in a 2000 Audi TT, and you don't even have to ask why it broke, because it was <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Halloween meets gasoline. So happy to see this. This is like a Lifetime Achievement Award, pretty much. Retro oh, Racing awesome. 73 Volkswagen Super exclamation point Beetle with GD. Yo, man. Wonderful. And Did, uh, uh, you, did you see any of their, their social medias? And, we did and, not. Uh, sure so I exactly. thought I sh- No, I definitely showed you at least a picture. All right. So I, last year they famously, because they're racing that beetle, um, they broke an oil or no, a, a, a super racing part valve cover screw backed off and they literally dumped nine quarts of mobile one over the entirety of the track. The track had to red flag everything. They used up all of their oil dry. And because it's the GDO man and all those guys, they did not shirk away from it. They got up on the top on the tower. They apologized to everyone. Everyone did the shame. Everyone came by and like, you know, slapped stickers on their car. They said, don't be that guy. Uh, so their theme, they dressed up as oil sheiks and they walked around with mobile one that they kept drinking. I out swear of. I right. showed you that picture. You did, I forgot. Okay. Okay. It, it was, I'm um, just, you know, ah, that's, that's lemons lean into your, uh, own your, own your <laughs> failures. <air>. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Which anyone oh, who's well. ever met the yo man, not surprised. Nope. Yep. It's great. All right. Uh, and I wasn't sure if you knew this, we were talking about unicorn cream with that. Cause I laughed about it, that they were doing r- pretty well. And I was like, ah, oh, funny team name. That's Eric Phipps in the, in the fantastic. We Super, built that we stage built. in the yeah. Super Yeah, right. 14th. So they Good finished. Yeah, them. well, they, and that's where they Forrester. finished. But they yeah. were higher than that when I looked. So I was pretty happy with that term. Looked confused. Uh, had a rough day. So they ended up in 34th. Uh, I'm Eric, sure Eric, still one of our, the butt. Yes. Yeah. Right. Eric, one of our buddies from back in the babe days. Yeah. 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 He was and there with I'm, one of our first or the first, no, not for a second civic race we had at some point. Remember that? Right. Nice. Yes. A long time ago. He was there with the work. Berg. He didn't race. He was. Then. He didn't drive it then, but he was. Yes. He was there with us. Yep. Yes. Yes. Just totally. Anyway. Okay. Uh, we're joining listener feedback. Hey, from our <laughs> last episode on YouTube, Al Jones pipe, piped in. Uh, so glad I had a chance to meet you at pit race. Uh, thanks for the beers and the dong toss. I know you had a mechanical on Sunday, but it's exciting to see that we managed to finish ahead of both 3 p.m. and garage heroes in the final standings. This means only one thing. Listen for my new podcast soon. Love you guys. Hope to see you in at the Vintage Grand Prix. Great to meet you, Al. Thank it was you so much. Awesome. Him and his whole yeah. team came over. We chatted for a they're long great. time. Yep. Yeah, there you're awesome, Al. It was so great to meet you. Uh, and you're so, yeah, so, so yeah, listen to the Al Jones How to Beat 3 PM <laughs> podcast. It's, sure, uh, really sure. <laughs> Just have a better car that doesn't need axles. How about that? Yep. We'll see how that goes. Uh and just and if you that must mean you care about racing more than we do. Uh and Yuri was late to the party. He forgot he, he was late with his Pilmini. Sure. Uh took too long to boil the water, but is was right on time because he got the second round and all the people that missed the first round uh ate his lovely um I think they were like dumpling type things is what they're. And so thank you for bringing them. Yuri, happy to have them. Awesome. I, 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 I was bummed. I missed that one, especially since the weather was nice. It was beautiful. You every never know time, though. Uh, yeah. Every time I'm there, it's freezing cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last year it snowed this year. It was 78 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty perfect actually. Yeah. So can't Wonderful. complain. Okay. Uh, dumpling, dumplings are never late. Sure. <laughs> 
she doesn't, she doesn't make much dumplings, yeah. but they wouldn't be late if she made them. Yeah, right. You know, you know who can boil water on time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good too. Yeah. Hi, mom. Uh, all right. So, all right. Topic time. Okay. Thank you. Soon someone will be knocking on my door wondering why am I making so much noise? That's Always. too darn bad. Sirs, as I mentioned yesterday, I drove from Las Vegas to San Diego. Funny story. Uh, half of the team that left Las Vegas elected to fly. Uh, several of us looked at, okay, waiting in the airport, flying the airport, landing in uh, San Diego, getting a rental car, and we elected to drive. And all of the people at the airport, their flights were delayed. One of them was delayed so bad I could have driven here, turned around, went back Pick them up and brought them back here and still oh, got no. here. <laughs> so I was in my car for a long time, which extends my opportunity to get caught up on podcast. And uh they're not sponsoring us, but uh one of them is the Donut Racing Show with uh Nolan from Donut Media, Elizabeth Blackenstock, and um uh oh darn it, uh um the other writer who has the black cat, she obsesses over uh, anyway on, uh, on her Instagram. Uh, and uh, they, they both wrote the rich energy book. Uh, I was going to, I'm going to think of it halfway through this. Uh, anyway, they were talking about tax evasion in formula one. Uh, several of the people, uh, Gene Haas, before he ever got into formula one actually served a little time for tax evasion. Uh the Jackie X talked about how he had to give up 93 cents of every pound he made, uh, or sorry, Jackie Stewart. Uh, so he moved to Monaco. And so it was a whole big thing about, you know, taxes and how they're trying to keep their money. And it got me thinking, you know, racers just make poor decisions and it's tax season. And what are we going to do with our tax refunds? Cause there's a lot of dumb things you can do. There's a lot of smart things you can do. And I threw this to my co-host and they went, yes. Heck yeah. <laughs> so you can see yep. where this is going. We're going to talk about good things, dumb things, and you know, respectable things, uh, ideas that you can do with your tax refund. And already, if you're yelling something at your radio or your computer, write it down, send it to us on our social medias. Tell us what dumb thing you want to do or will do with your tax refund. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, throw the legal disclaimer of we are not financial experts as indicated <laughs> by the fact that we race cars and host a podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay. uh, yeah, take our advice about the same way you take our safety advice with a large do uh, grain of salt. Not safety advice. I give great <laughs> safety advice. What do you, you do? You do. Absolutely. You do. Okay. You know, when Even Jeff's on here saying step one, take guard off of spinny tool. I mean, sure. <laughs> yep. What's funnier is I don't think anyone on the screen is getting a tax refund this year. We all had to pay. Right. So I did not know you guys had to pay. Oh, I think yes. I, I thought I wrote that in. I did write that in the top. But uh, yes. yeah, I, I and actually I don't normally get a tax return. I, uh, I don't like giving the government an interest free loan. So I try to structure it. If we owe, it's less than a thousand. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, we're trying to tweak it, but with a retirement and some other changes in the military, I got totally screwed. And even with taxes taking out of my paycheck on a regular basis, we just had to write a check for about 7% of my total income last year to get us caught up on taxes. Oh, that, is, no. that was like passing a kidney stone. And it was, oh. and it's, it's a one-off thing because of the way the money played out this year. So, so this is even worse. So you're thinking like, I could buy these things, but instead I had to sell all these things because I couldn't, the things I don't even own to try to pay the government. Anyway, this is not yes. everyone tax evasion. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, it is definitely, in my case, it is most certainly not tax evasion. Good no, Lord. No. I would have bought a much nicer Porsche with what I wrote this check for That's a on shame. this one. Um, but oh. let, let's talk about some smart choices, you know, planning ahead spares. Uh, and you'll notice, and this is, it's a kind of a bit of uh, predatory marketing, but a lot of your auto parts stores and your 
entry level tool supply stores, not just Harbor Freights, but your northern tools like that, they deliberately have sales and some pretty good coupons this time of year. So if you're not on their email list, go to their website because they always have like the printable or scannable coupon. And I do like if I've got money like this, I like to stock up on some of my consumables, your 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 plastic nitrile gloves, any sort of death wheel, spinny disc, sawzall blades, you know, hand cleaner kitty litter, first aid kits, bandages, everything you, well, I need in my garage, but this is a good time to go and get that stuff uh, for a, a, in mass for probably a decent price. Sounds good. I was thinking, I got a few lines of thought on this one. These are, these are the smart choices. We're going to say this, that, that's, that's our category, smart choices. I like Matt's <laughs> That was a smart choice for you. I was thinking upgrades to make your racing life better. Like, a new seat. If your race seat is a janky one, if it's a Kirky, unless it's like one of those really good Kirkies, but you know, that's unlikely. Um, if you've got just an old metal frame one, get a nice new seat. It makes it so much more pleasant being in the car for a couple hours. You don't have numb butt. You don't have like, you're, you're not flopping around in the seat. You're not shoving your arms next to you in the Kirky because that's how much room there is to fit in it. Right? No, get a new seat. Or, Everyone loves to buy Kirkies for their first lemons car because they're like, oh man, it's cheap and it's lightweight and we're going to dominate. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, oh, no, this yeah. sucks. Uh, <laughs> or how about a better cool shirt setup? You might have a janky cooler, a janky shirt or both or none. Cool shirt setup is a great way to spend the money. And then you'll get to experience the very special feeling the first time it comes on. Every time you get in the car, it is... <sighs> It is lovely. <laughs> Those of you who've had it know exactly what I'm talking about. It's amazing. Uh, yes. Or last, how about a helmet that really fits you? Most mm. people have a helmet that, well, it's got a hot spot here where the wiring's falling out of it or this. And get a helmet that really fits. Like, But now when I say that, I mean, go try it on. Not just one. Go to a store or an event that has a gear place and try on like four, six, a bunch. And it once you do that back to back, it is amazing the difference. Find one that fits. As, make your life better. Yeah, as Jeff loves to say, he has a Simpson shaped head. Uh and, and I I did that and I spent some time at Discovery Parts in Georgia and actually wore them around for a little bit, which they encourage because they wanted to see if you have any hot spots. Uh and if you're anywhere in the Midwest, um the uh the the other the you know, one of the big distributors is down there. There's a lot of good uh Winding Lots of Road, I think it's go. kind of Texas. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OG in Virginia, Summit in Ohio, et cetera. Yep. Just went bad. We're, now, yeah, now I think it's safe. back. Um, I think I'm the last of like everybody that has my old school helmet, which has hot spots. Mike is falling out. Uh, ear cups don't fit. Have to wear headphones or I go deaf in the car. And all y'all are like, oh, what? I can't hear you. My head helmet's too great. Yeah, everyone else has stilos. And we're like, what? Every, right, yeah. everybody does. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm the kid with the, I'm still wearing the, I'm not wearing the I mean, comforter. It's a carbon but carbon fiber I'm, zamp. It's pretty good still, but. It is. But I'm, all of these things you're talking about, I am, can't wait till mine is up yep. so I can go buy myself a new one. Uh, uh, on, yes, on I love my row so much. But you've got to try them on. That's I I cannot stress yeah. that enough. Yeah, yeah. An another thing that I just have tried now, and Metzl, I know you're a fan that I suggest people splurge on. This is a small dollar thing, tinted helmet visor. It lets you actually keep your visor down, which is safer. Keep stuff out of your eyes. Keep fires out there. Great, no problem. Your glasses don't fog up. You don't have to wear those. It's easier. It's faster. I'm fully on board with this plan. I suggest you get one. Uh, yeah. Great. Next. And I even like mine at night because uh, even uh, I'll I'll have it up, and if you've got overhead lights or something, it really oh. actually reduces the the dazzle you'll get from uh, mm. parts of the racetrack with the uh, headlights pointed at you and stuff. Cool, mm. sounds great. Uh, next, next smart choice. You probably need new tires on your tow pig and or trailer, and these are the and I say these ones specifically because the worst thing you can get is a breakdown on your truck and trailer on your way to or from a race, especially at home. Oh, it's the Awful. Worst. And most people ignore their trailer tires. They're probably old. They're probably janky. They're probably cupped. They're probably out of date. They're probably going to fail. So just replace them ahead of time. That'd be great. 
everyone on the screen that has had a trailer failure while towing and it never happens in the middle of the day it always happens at oh god awful you know time of night in the middle of nowhere everyone on on the podcast has had that right yet raise her hand yeah you two guys are raising your hand you broke down like in the middle of connecticut or something like at 10 o'clock at night no it wasn't us didn't oh never mind we don't break down. Jeff. All right, never mind. Okay. Yeah. It was yes, Jeff. Jeff. If, if Jeff were here, he definitely would raise his hand. No. Oh, absolutely. No, yes. Oh, no. no Jeff not. Our trailer has some fairly new tires on it and two spares. And I usually go through the brakes and bearings every year and, you know, those things. That's why. Nope. Uh, yeah. And la- Sorry last Sorry that one, you uh, just pointed yourself out on that one. Yeah, so yeah, there's well, that. You I thought it was going to. I bought a trailer from Jeff. You have a moon trailer and that he traded to a crackhead <laughs> in the middle of the night for a stolen one. So, Jeff exactly. Tra- and oddly enough, the tires on that one are pretty good. I mean, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you can't get anything off of it. They were, but- oh yeah, no, the, but the tires are probably fresh stolen before you. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like your moon trailer. I like to laugh at your moon trailer. <laughs> yep. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all we can do with the moon trailer. Laugh at it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yep. This is such a boring. Well, this well, is a boring one. Is, well, it's the smart You're choice. So boring. The, the smart choice is buy a Vanguard S and P five hundred index fund. Yeah, you're Boo. so bo- Boo. you're so boring. Boo. This is supposed to be a fun show. Yes, boo. This was the smart choice section. Well, well I'm going to talk about real smart choice things. section, and then reasonable. Which I can't others. wait. Right, I this can't wait for the stupid choice because uh, I have so uh, many good my, ones. My 401k actually goes into the uh, uh, an S and P. So yeah, mm-hmm. still a. So. Dumb choice. It's Yay, a dumb choice. the excitement of Vanguard Mutual Funds. <laughs> You're such an adult. <laughs> Why do you have to be an adult today? <laughs> because he's got a race car to pay for it keeps his muscles <laughs> but yeah i mean that's you're not wrong um okay i my my suggestions aren't even actual smart ones uh i was looking at plasma cutters because i thought that'd be a great idea yeah. so agreed and so i actually there was a facebook post recently i think it was probably in the lemons um group that we're talking about somebody wanted a plasma cutter cutter and they said oh they said looking for a relatively cheap one and a bunch of people said there's fairly inexpensive ones on amazon and they're like these are great i use them all the time um this so there's two different ones uh they're a couple hundred bucks so i know we were talking about in the thousands but um a plasma cutter just seems like a good idea I know um, the Garage Heroes have one and they use it fairly often. So I'm not advocating for this one. I don't own it. I don't own a plasma cutter, but I think it'd be a fun idea. Um, I, I I have a plasma cutter. I owned one. I bought it used for a friend who upgraded. And right now it is at Pantless Mats for uh-huh. a uh, for a project. Um, and if, yeah, if you live anywhere there's rust, you want a plasma cutter. Why? Because it makes it really easy to cut out rust. Oh, you know, I wasn't you cutting out the a, rust. You don't have to use a sawzall or anything. It doesn't get in your eyes. It's yeah. it's great. You can cut it in these nice square lines for a patch panel or whatever it is you're doing. Cutting metal yes. with fire. And it just seems like a great idea. It lets you cut like curves and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. I'm like not the biggest fan of uh, cutoff wheels. I'm not good at it. I kind of occasionally shy away from it. It kind of bust back at you and i just think a plasma cutter would be fun because i just cut things with fire sounds good plasma okay. cutter has never exploded into my neck yeah right mm. yeah sold done I, I know i'm getting you oh you already had one anyway um the other idea i had was i really like our race toolbox so we bought it and it's a nice one with the wood on top and it seems like one of those things like a get organized in our in a race trailer even if you don't have the setup that we do I think it was a couple hundred bucks and it, I think that one was on clearance I think but it, was. it it really does hold we've figured out everything that needs to go in it it holds enough stuff you roll it out anywhere you go you have a table so uh, or at least a workspace uh, or a junk space a yeah, space just, that collects junk yes to clarify it's a 48 inch wide rolling toolbox with five drawers in it so when we get to the track we wheel it out of the trailer put it in our pits boom there's all our tools right there and then when you're done we'll wheel it back in the trailer no more loading toolboxes oh. and crates of tools and this and that 
know, when we used to five re- gallon buckets full of sockets you gotta dump on the ground when you get there yeah i mean that's some, how some people roll um yeah like we used to put the the very heavy craftsmen in the uh in the back seat of the truck um so yeah this is an open a, trailer yeah. This is such, yeah. This is such an upgrade. I guess that's assuming that you have a uh, enclosed trailer. Well, but even with really an nice. open trailer, you can just wheel it up on the front and strap it down, and sure. there you go. It's yeah. a it's actually a really good time of year too because they're they're doing like their model year closeouts, and you can find some good deals. Of Jeff loves the Icon line. I do like some of those as well. But like the Huskies at low, and I forget what uh, Cobalt. Cobalt is Lowe's. Husky is Home, Home Depot. Depot. And if you uh, if you are not, they are in no way sponsoring us. But uh, if you follow the drive, they have a subheading of in the garage, and you can sign up for email alerts of everything of a particular subject that they find that goes on sale. Oh. And they do it. They do mm. it across the board to Home really? Depot, to Lowe's, to everything, to Amazon, and they will say these are the ten best power uh, tool packages that you can find. I recently just bought a Milwaukee kit based on uh, something that they had on there. And it was just a heck of a deal. And they'll put like what that they, and they have hot links to it. And I think they do have an affiliate deal with Amazon, but they're showing good deals. So who cares if the drive makes a few bones uh, selling something good like that, but they'll also That's go fun. to home Depot. And Chris is, is signing yeah. up right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can see him typing. Yeah. Um, okay. Those are the s- fairly smart things that I had. Uh, I'm, I have more, I have really stupid things though. Can we move on to stupid things? <laughs> yes. Okay, awesome. good. Chrissy is very excited about these, these I, things. I Do went to, to the depths share? of the, please, please. I went to the oh, depths yes, of the yeah, internet. I, um, I decided, so we didn't really say oh, this, first but one posting deleted. Gone. Oh, it's, that means it was such a good deal. It sold. It was a really good deal. It, it was, was a, a CRX. CRX. It was a CRX. Oh, uh, and it was, it was a that. really good deal. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, I don't, I don't, I didn't post any information on in our notes because I wanted it to be a secret. So I apologize. So um, to, we didn't say this, but I went a little large on the possible tax return that we could get. So I was thinking $3,000. That's a little bit more than, than most of us are getting. But I decided if I want to buy really stupid car project or and other things, uh, we're going to go higher. Do, I, do my other ones work? They do. I got them all up now. Okay. Let's... Oh, we're going to start with the outlaw. No, no, we'll, we'll start here. Oh, we're starting with the oh, Fiat. Okay. Racingjunk.com, because I started here. A 68 Fiat 124. It is $2,400. It needs probably some paint or... Yes, it has... It's half Bondo. Uh, it is in Massachusetts, so we could get it. It is... Uh, Ooh, it need, hold on it, that. That is a surprisingly it, rust-free engine bay. It for needs a, for a Fiat. It needs a visionary. Some looks, reassembly required. It, it looks solid. It looks like the rockers are actually yeah. in good shape. Comes with interior. two sets of rims and tires. Oh, wow, that interior that is actually up. complete. Like it needs paint and trim and and finishing, oh, but like they could yeah. be a driver fairly easily. This is it actually needs, a absolutely. solid deal. It needs yeah. a visionary. Yeah, you finish that, you get the paint job on that, and you would look great parked next to the side of the road waiting on the tow truck. That's a, <laughs> yeah, this is why I said these great... are really stupid. Uh, this is your, this is help are you grow your mustache quickly. And <laughs> I don't need a bob, bobbity boobity. Uh, uh, this, but it would be a great little, you know, uh, you and the significant other or the dog or the, you know, one of the kids is big enough to not be in a child seat, rolling up to get some ice cream or something like that. I'm take the Carson coffee and with that kind of stuff. Exactly. They're they're not notoriously reliable, but they are the 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 depth of knowledge on everything about them is there. And I've they're... heard that when they're working, they're basically better than MGBs. They have, you know, like real roll up windows and the top actually goes up and they have a little more power. And so well, cool. To that end, apparently they're better than a 914 as well. That's yeah. But yeah. <laughs> and it, it is also, it's, it is very Italian. Yeah. Okay. okay. My next idea is a 1990 Mercedes Benz 560 oh. SEL. And oh, it is $2,600. And it looks really pretty fresh. There's oh, only my. one picture. God. But one owner, but the- one owner, new by his purchased new by his dad, St. Petersburg, Florida. Like, how do I go get drive this home instead of the Honda CRV <laughs> I'm driving home this weekend? Seriously, it is it has only got a hundred and nineteen thousand. This is 
so cherry. My gosh, that is so great. I mean, this yeah, was 560. That's the big V8, man. That's yeah. the, that was the King Hoss. Yeah, this was hey. this was you. You are a, a, a an executive if Bala, you bought this in 1990. You're a Bala. And I love that it spent its life in Florida and survived that era. So there is no horrible body kit on this. There, just the it's chrome wheel rolling. lips, but that's it. Yeah, it's not rolling on a set of Rams. It's it it is all. A, but you I can do it if you chrome, wanted to. Chrome. Chrome wheel lips may not be stock, but the rest of that is just so yeah. cherry. I'm just, I'm, I'm, my guess is it's no longer there because the ad was posted January 6th. I yeah. probably, but, but you know, still, it was still on racingjunk.com, cool. which we love. Uh, so if you are in Florida, oh, I'm Dr. Man, Florida, Florida, Dr. Florida <laughs> man is the one I went meant to say. Dr. Uh, man, Florida. Yeah. Man. <laughs> oh, don't yell at me, oh, Donnie. Oh, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting feedback even, on that one. <laughs> not even drinking tonight. Um. Anyway. Okay. So it's probably not there. You didn't take the ad off, but I don't care. It's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Okay. My now, next yeah, uh, that would be, really would win, stupid that would idea. Be a great rally car. You wouldn't win a lemons rally in that one. She would also be immensely comfortable. You put little flags time. on the front fenders. Yeah. <laughs> Diplomat yeah. flags. Yes. Okay. Uh, my next stupid idea is a four wheeler in my town. So I, <laughs> I found this uh, cause I just went to like stupid things, ATVs under $3,000 and I found a four wheeler in my town. So um, I, probably might die but it would be fun for a little while so there's my st- it's a one ten. it's it's it's, it's, it's a smaller kids, than scooty you'll be it's fine a oh, it's one. a kid's one that's yeah. even better <laughs> it's pink yes. and gray i might those are like lawnmower back wheels yep. i legit might go get it now yep yeah. yes you absolutely would. i have two uh, i have two nephews that I have two nephews that live up the street that totally need this. Yes. They will die they immediately. Two totally. <laughs> no, it's a CVT. They, oh. they don't weigh enough to tip it over. Darn it! I they thought it was a real it. person one. Crap! Now I Sorry, just want to buy a real I, people. You've seen them at uh, races. I've seen people. Oh yeah. Full oh, size. Oh, big people. Where bond. big people? Okay, normal size people. Okay, they're, I'm gonna. I'm writing them an email little, now to see if they. Uh, they're great little pit vehicles. Okay, they were my stupid ideas. Mental, what kind of stupid <laughs> ideas do you have? Uh motorcycle. Duh. You, you you and here's the thing, that's an investment that gives back to you because you save money on your commute to work. Uh I was in you know, I'm in San Diego and it's California, lane splitting is legal. And if you're coming across the Coronado Bridge anytime after 5 a.m. before 10 a.m., you need to be in a motorcycle or you're doing a whole lot of sitting in traffic. So uh, I did find, uh, obviously I'm in a world of, you know, uh, lots of motorcycles and rust free things. So I did find a couple of, uh, you know, the, uh, the infamous Facebook marketplace, um, which is where I get most of my terrible ideas. Here is a lovely Korean knockoff TU 250 X. It's called a Suzuki. Um, uh, but I think, yeah, it's one of the that knockoffs, but it's a, not just it's a, a universal Japanese seat. motorcycle. Yeah. It's a universal, you know, cruiser type thing. So Your top speed is going to be about 80 miles an hour, but on the street, that thing would absolutely just tear. Uh, another option here. You can't go wrong uh, with a ninja. ninja. And now, have a this ninja? Is a, uh, yeah. This is one of the, it's the new model of the 250. I think this one actually might be the 300 ninja. Or ninjet, as the the you know mockery used to say. When, oh, we uh, loved our two hundred and fifty. That thing. Was yeah, great. we totally did. It was plenty. We, I my mean, first, plenty. Yeah, my first motorcycle was a two hundred and fifty ninja, and I bought it as at was ours. Thirteen point four percent interest because I was oh, eighteen years old. No. I didn't know any better. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and oh. I rode that thing everywhere. It was fantastic. Now this one needs some plastics, but luckily there are many many places that make uh, new plastics for this one, and it is a bulletproof motor if you literally just keep the oil changed uh it'll it'll work forever and and that uh, one needed a paint job which means hand paint make it look cool sparkles or something and just yeah rattle can springtime for hitler's rattle can just i would say you could also sticker bonnet 
you know, just sure. go, go on eBay and buy like one of those, uh, you know, $20 sticker packs. But now this one, this one I got just for Chris. This is a 19, uh, why is it arguing with me here? There it is, 1964 Honda Dream. So it is actually cool. almost, it's, it's, it's an actual frame. So it's not one of the stamped steel motorcycles. So it actually has a frame on there. And you want to talk about a painfully simple machine, Honda Dreams. And yeah, you could probably go through this thing and have it running in a weekend. It does say ran when it was parked or it ran when it sat, which, yeah. And it says open to trades. Now it's been here a while because I've, I spent a lot of time on there and it says seven weeks ago. That's for this ad. So this person is probably willing to make a deal and you would have the coolest motorcycle in the parking lot. Even if it is the slowest, you would totally get like crushed by, you know, Honda Groms and the little Chinese knockoffs on that one. But that is, uh, I, um, or you can even go cheaper and at least on the Facebook marketplace here, or any place where 50 CC scooters do not require insurance registration or license you can routinely find the Chinese knockoff ones for 250 to $900, depending on the condition of them. And that is a great pit vehicle. Yep. And those are the, so, uh, the D DUI cycles. When someone loses their <laughs> license in those States, they just ride one of those. Or okay, it, I, it like, or they're sick of the bus in, in uh, Nevada. They're like, I am so tired of riding the bus. I'm buying one of these things. Excellent. All right. I've got a couple. These are Ooh. definitely stupid. Oh, yes. We've got a Segway 9-bot go-kart pro. So electric go-kart, 23 mile an hour top speed, 1G acceleration, 15 mile range. Why don't I have one of these? Folds up. These it things folds are up. These yep. things are alarmingly quick. What? Yes. Yep. So I mean, if, you know, the ads are obviously I make it look this... more fun than it is, but what? I mean, this looks pretty cool, right? How much is it's it? It's a go kart. It's seventeen hundred dollars on sale right now. Seventeen hundred dollars. Right? Oh wow, that is uh, it, normally they're over two thousand dollars. That's a good price. It, it has a drift mode. <gasps> yep. <laughs> thought, so where I have to take it to a to a karting place? I mean, you can use it on the street. You're just it's just so, illegal. You know, there is, there was, I think he probably got busted by the police, but uh, on Fremont street, there was a guy that would have one of those and he would run it up and down, not on the, uh, the experience where sidewalk. People, no, yeah, yeah. on the street, straight oh. up on the road where the cars were, where he would go whipping down because it's got headlights and well, this he one would does just not. go, it's a different one, okay. but yeah, still he would go tearing down Fremont street in one of these. <laughs> oh, because I just I don't want to get I don't want to get it. Ooh, bumblebee take, taken away from me at the. Like, what happens if Wait, I get pulled over? Well, you just don't ride it on the street. It's not legal. You ride it in the, around the track, or you know, mm. at, at the track. It's a pit vehicle, or if you know, at a parking lot, say around mm. a you know chemical plant. Yeah, you know, for I have example, one of those. <laughs> right? You know. Oh, and I also work. have a, a stone cutters parking lot down there. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Mm. I was thinking no. more for pit vehicle transportation. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah, okay. definitely dumb. Sign definitely me up. get yelled at. Yes. Now the next thing is way dumber and way more expensive. Oh. This is an electric powered spoiling surfboard. I've seen these things. <laughs> so it's like a wakeboard, but it has a, a hydrofoil in it. The hydrofoil has an electric motor on it. So you stand on this board that foils above the water while the electric motor underneath it powers you along. And yeah, and you ride that There's around. There's two people in the water. on it. That's that dangerous. One, yep. Two people. For, totally for, dangerous. For, for this one second. And then yep. <laughs> they fall right off. Yep. If you uh if you've ever seen an air chair, this is like a motorized one of those that you stand up on. And uh if you've never seen one of these, just go to a YouTube fail compilation and i <laughs> guarantee you there that. are people there are people <laughs> face planting left and right with this thing <laughs> i like it says ride with confidence you're like oh yeah. okay when you're good at it yeah i've seen people <laughs> right i've seen people at the cape of, use these you fail. and uh, the foiling is becoming a thing and a lot of stuff i mean there's surf foiling and the people seen um kiteboarding foils now too like it's it's you know obviously and then 
America's Cup and all that stuff is all foiling now, even if little foiling sailboats uh, to a foiling school. And this thing just seems like a really stupid way to spend $9,000. Dude, this is not <laughs> tax return <laughs> money. <laughs> Depends you... on your tax return. Well, if you... <laughs> You did it wrong if you yep. have $9,000 for your tax return. Like I said, this is a very stupid yeah. way to spend no, $9,000. Well, yeah, if you gave the government a $9,000 loan, get yourself a foil. You, you <laughs> have earned it. stupid anyway. <laughs> yep. You are not good at taxes. This is wow. the stupid uh, choice section, remember. I, <laughs> it, I, I say it within the limit. Epically, I love it. I disagree. <laughs> I think Chrissy's wrong. Chris, I love your choice. It was the right way to go. <laughs> we're going to have links to all of this, of course, oh in the show notes. Oh, so are we? These, Dude, check, we're check gonna, all this out. You we're know. not advertising yes. for all of these things. When your boss oh, walks in, click on the ad that I post about some, you know, horrible, you know, used up scooter. And then when, you know, someone else walks in that you're trying to impress, click on the ad for the uh, surf foil. That's, that's yeah. how you work that one. When wow, looking wow. over your shoulder. Um, so between good and hella stupid we have it's not a bad idea yeah mm -hmm. reasonable choice that's actually a pretty good idea right okay <laughs> i like your yes your ideas go ahead do you like my ideas i know no, no. <laughs> oh. i mean oh. I can't that's what get you them. at least at least my cars i could be like i'm just gonna buy this two thousand dollar car and you're like you're stupid but it's still it's only two thousand dollars and then you're just like oh i'm just gonna this is yours are much more committal yeah definitely yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay let's All hear right. your reasonable, reasonable choice. choices well i got a bunch of choices here first one the hot tub that your wife wants that's a great reasonable choice of a way to spend that money yep everyone's happy and plus after racing or working on the car all day that seems like a great way to go or not uh, or just it's saturday and i can yep. oh now we need to put some kind of tv out there so we can watch f1 in the hot tub can you make that happen sure working on it totally. yeah. there's there's all another right. reasonable choice an outdoor cover for your television i mean we have a all plan right. amazon has them they're great yep working all on right, it next. why aren't you working on it now because I was building a beach cart beach for Chrissy's cart. mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I have to fix a race car, and then I have to get the MG worked fine. on. And okay, fine, fine. The NSX. Fine. And anyway, uh, next thing is upgrades for your trailer. Whatever race trailer you have, there are ways you can upgrade it that will make your life better. Like if you have an enclosed trailer, wiring and lights, huge, wonderful. Maybe just paint it. Painting's lovely. Insulating, air conditioning, you know, new tires, uh, e-track, e-track everywhere. It's amazing stuff. All the e-tracks, spare tires, awning. LED lights. Awning. If you're, if you're out here in the West, yeah. awning, because it gives you a place to get out of the sun. Yep. So all those are, those are sensible choices that you will be very happy they with. Sensible choices. Yep. Uh, and last is a, a Nomex suit, a good Nomex suit to replace either your bed quilt that you're still using or <laughs> your tired, smelly, dirty, out of date suit that maybe has a tear or two in it that you try to keep hiding from Ken when you do it through gear tech. Get a new Look one. You Jeff. No, he has a new one. That's good. No, his, he, his, he got rid of his, his torn his one. Com his comforter was not the, the torn one, but it's, it's, Oh, know, it we, smells we... bad. <laughs> yep. Yes. Uh, so like I, for example, I found this, this lovely one from Safe Racer, uh, which has a a clearance section at Safe Racer, which is always nice. Always shop the clearance when you can. Um, uh, I'm sharing my screen now. This is an OMP One S One suit. This was originally oh, that's very nice two thousand dollars, marked down to fourteen hundred. So still expensive, but you know, damn if it's not lightweight, comfortable, easy. You know, the suits you do get what your money you're paying for this is they say they're top level suit lightest weight flexible breathable all those things but hey still protects you and yep. much like seats and helmets you know as we all started into this you know we went okay what what is cheap and then as you get more and more involved in there you begin to divert funds into your comfort and uh, i i did the original 99 you know on sale suit that you have to wear the underwear with 
Uh, oh, that's now yeah. that's now a, a spare fueling suit that I just take to the track in case <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody needs to refuel in your, your good suit. And I actually bought a uh, 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 an OMP from Pantless Matt because he got it and it was just a little too tight on his massive shoulder. So my bony body fit into it until I quit running. And now it's a little snug in the center, but the weight of it is immensely better than uh, the oh, quilt that so I had before. I, I had a, I had a super wow. thick one that I'll put on when it's cold, yeah. but I'm not going to yeah. race. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it, and yeah it, it, am, and it's, it's amazing that it's only yeah. that it's as many layers it is. It needs to be especially, mm. I mean, that it needs you to, you wouldn't need to, it's not a one layer. Like it feels like a one layer. Like it just is that thin. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's it, the built-in stretch panels is what I really liked about it uh, over my uh, my old quilt suit. Uh, you know, so like you can sit and move and bend around in there without Weird. having to, you know, adjust intimate parts of you. So yeah, uh, that's a that's a good one. Okay, that's Chrissy. I I almost feel like this is a smart choice. <laughs> sure, it's reasonable. Uh, a year of house cleaning. So I don't have to clean the house. Hey, you get someone to come in once a month, spick and span it. Seems like a reasonable idea. Absolutely. I will have Look, uh, more time to be able to do yeah. things. Yeah. Find uh find somebody local. You're helping out the local economy. That's that's valid. Oh, see, that's an even better swing. So I can not only do I just need somebody to clean my house, but I can remember say, like 10 years ago I offered this to you and you yeah, said uh-huh. no and you were offended. Uh-huh. Wanted to remind you of that. Yep. I was. And then I also. <laughs> wow. Am... Really? You're digging up a 10 uh-huh. year old <laughs> statement, Chris. Uh-huh. You must have the most comfortable couch ever. It is. It, it is, is the most, yeah. <laughs> most comfortable yeah. couch ever. Also, the, the uh-huh. king size temper pedic leaves plenty of room. To spread. <laughs> <laughs> it is. This is a story we've been talking about for 10 years. Plus, uh, you're not wrong. I did take offense. And then also, you are occasionally quick, not quick. You will point out my downfalls in cleaning. Therefore, there are things that I do not like to clean. This is not everyone house cleaning now, um, but uh, well, there are things related to the. You know, you start you buy the cheap seat because it does the job, and then you buy the cheap. <laughs> is that like the cheap and wife? The and then you're like, <laughs> you know what? No, I want to be comfortable. You know, oh no, I'm going to clean my own house because it, it gets the job done. It's affordable. But now, no, I've worked hard and I've gotten That's, promoted, and no, I want to be. That's comfortable. not how the story went. I at want all. to be comfortable, and now I am changing my mind on my initial. <laughs> Oh. I don't want someone to clean the house. It's yes. And, 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 and evolving. I thought you were saying this is why you always have to have a practice wife. Yes. So. That's what I thought you were getting at. The I one. do not recommend the practice wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Um, so yes, uh, this was a, this is a story that's been going on for a long time. So it sounds like a lovely <laughs> idea because there's things that I don't clean and um, maybe we should, or somebody else will for me. Uh, and the other idea was like, let's just go on vacation. So, okay. Just cause let's go, you know, back to Cancun. Might I, might I recommend San Diego? It oh. is a beautiful city. It really it is. is. This is a, it's, it's, it's everything LA tried to be. But the weather even more perfect. It really, yeah. And, and yeah, just, uh, you know, the all my jokes about you know terrible California drivers, I mean there's traffic here because it's a dense area, but everyone's kind of nice. They're polite, you know. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of idiots down. You know what? Everybody's nicer than the people in Philadelphia, so it's got to be fine. <laughs> yeah, I have to. I don't have to. I'm driving Friday all the way up to uh, San Francisco from here, and that is just literally the longest way through, you know, half of California, and I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, and it is, yeah. So, but San Diego is a wonderful place. If you guys are looking to expand your horizons with travel. I'm just suggesting to go on a random trip that I haven't planned just because <laughs> I have this money that I don't actually have. So anyway, um, with mental. the check you wrote to the government, you Pretty would much. love to travel more. Sounds, sounds great. Um, I will, I will also th- throw this in there under the, the, I feel like it's a reasonable choice. Invest in yourself. And to that end, because this is a racing podcast, I'm going to say, go to a racing school, an actual, no kidding. Uh, you know, the, the new version that they've got of the, um, uh, Scott, is it Scott Russell's or skip barber, skip barber, you know, that he sold, but then they, they back, 
put back together. The Bondurant school is running in Arizona. Uh, use, use one of those things where they've got their car. Uh, actually, they've got a pretty decent one at uh, Button Willow where you can uh, use one of the old Long Beach celebrity scions. Yeah, so in, in Mid Ohio best, has one with um, Honda's. Yes. yes. Uh, Atlanta Motorsport Park has them with Radicals, which it's not cheap, but man, it's fun. And actually, they also do a Radical school at Spring Mountain in Las Vegas, and I'm sure they've got them elsewhere. Uh, and, and, and if you've got a couple of folks or you and your significant other are both racers, invest in that racing school. It's a good bonding experience. And Everyone can use more education. Not really feeling to go on the racing school, even though it's a mod you can take with you on every single car you'll ever drive. How about welding? Look at your local community college. Check out their welding and fabrication courses. That's where I took my welding course. You don't even have to get to be a certified welder. And even if you're not going to put together a roll cage, uh, being able to kind of, you know, wander over after, you know, maybe uh, Bruce has had too many beers and you don't want him welding on your car, but you need something stitched up real quick. You can borrow a welder at the track. And if you know how to weld and you have a welder with you at the track, you make friends and influences people. This is one of the myriad of reasons people love Corey Dickman. Because yep. he can do all of those things. Totally. <laughs> yes. Uh, and he so will work for uh, and I, Yes. Yeah. And actually now he's, yeah, he's not, he's, he's, he's looking after his health. So he'll, uh, he, he works for soda, I think, you know, and good, <laughs> good karma and water. So it's even cheaper and uh, you can, <laughs> even cheaper. Yeah. Uh, you know, or it, it, that's a skill set that, you know, you go on the lemons forums and you're looking for, uh, the, you know, to find a seat. Oh, Hey, by the way, blah, blah, blah. I've got a truck and a welder and I can be at this track. Yes. You're on our team. So these are, <laughs> these are worthwhile skills on there. Good and, idea. Uh, yes. Uh, and if you've got any other courses or things like that, that you think would be a good one, uh, you got a dumb idea to spend your tax refund on, get a hold of us, or, you know, something we totally missed or a Vanguard fund that Chris would be interested in hearing about, get yep. a hold of us on any of our social medias, put something uh, down. I, in the I think we have to vote. Ooh. Best idea. Like most realistic, yeah, yes, we really actually would like to do that or think you should do that idea. And then also dumbest idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Idea Let's... that I would really like to do. I don't know if it's dumb or not, but I want that Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. It really is. Oh, yeah. I think it's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, I like mental's idea of a driving school that's really a smart use of that money i like the, the phrase that got it for me is it's a mod you can do that you that goes in any car you drive mm, yep i like that i am going with the plasma cutter because i think it is a reasonable ch cheap idea the only pro it, it is reasonable for the amount of money that we're not getting mm -hmm. uh the problem that you have is that where we're going to keep it but i think it's still a good idea all right are we, are we going with the dumbest idea? Now we're going to dumb. Go ahead, Mental. What's the dumbest idea here? I, I, want, that, I want that Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still want the kitty four by four, the four wheeler. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a pretty stupid idea. I want you to get the surfboard, not because I don't want to spend that much money, but I also want to take hours of fail videos, like hours of them. <laughs> just like fail. You bump, you bump. Yeah, I just, I want that so bad. Uh, overlay like the Benny Hill music. Your, yeah. Basically. It's when you let your friends try the stand up paddle board for the first time. It's always sure. the same. Kind of thing. Uh, we did pretty well. You no, know, the first time is always a challenge for people. Uh, sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is good. good. Thank tell you for us, this tell idea. Us what, tell us what uh, dumb idea of ours you would like or throw your own dumb idea or, in there. If, yeah, find a link on something. Yeah, under uh, a couple thousand dollars. Yes. Um, now, it's one of the tools you might buy with your tax refund is an air compressor. And just in time, it's time for... Just, just the tip. Tip. <laughs> I think yep. mental's yep. uh sound, I think it was clipping out because of um Zoom yeah, got like, mad. Yeah. Uh no, no, I think it's just just Zoom. Uh 
compressed air. So this week uh, at work, we have a topic about uh, our our toolbox talk is on compressed air. We use a lot of compressed air at work and it is very, and I know, uh, so one of the easy rules is don't spray it at yourself. And I know that I, at really least nice the when you're dusty. Chris really does this all the time. And that is okay. So most people do this all the time, but at work really shouldn't do that because um, even if you have safety glasses on, you're blowing stuff very close to your eye. You're especially, you just shouldn't be breathing in the stuff that you are spraying all over the place. It's just very dangerous. So I would suggest that next time you do that, that you find a different way to do that. Get a friend to brush you off or change your shirt or do something like that. But it's very dangerous for you to be spraying and blowing stuff uh, that like that at your face. Um, and also, if you know that your the line is very... Um, if there's a hole in the line, it will, I'm sorry. I thought I heard there was a feedback. Um, oh, it's Chris is what it is. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so there, if there's a hole in the line that really, um, allows a lot of energy to leak out. We found that that is uh, one of our energy hogs in our plant actually. So if your compressed air has a compressed air line has a hole in it and is leaking air, you are losing a lot of uh, efficiency. So that's one thing to look at. And also check the nozzle that you have on your um, end of your line because there are different size nozzles and you may be able to direct it a different way, but making sure that you are watching where you're spraying that air, especially where you know, what who is around, if there's other people around, what you're spraying might be affecting them as well. So just the tip, watch your compressed air. It's a good idea. Thanks. Always. I, I, I do like try to put like a thumb in front of it, but it is just like a good way to sometimes well, just, just turn get... the pressure down a little bit. Yes. Yes. But I, I will, I will, I, I won't lie to you and say that I'm not going to do it anymore, but I will certainly do it in a more safe manner. I'm definitely think about it. Like when you're all dusty from sanding something on a hot day, that's definitely the best <laughs> way to solve that problem. Okay. Well, safety squirrel says don't do that. So it, whether you choose to believe me or not, just saying. Oh no, we how totally we, believe you. be safe. The safety cat. Yes. That. Okay. Good. Yes. All right. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Or have we, have we, I can't have wait we... to see other people's ideas. Please do send us your dumb ideas for tax returns or your good ideas for tax returns. We would love that. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, thanks for downloading us. We really hope you enjoyed this episode and this week's of everyone racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, hey, subscribe. Totally free and worth what you paid for it. Go to iTunes, give us a five-star rating. Even if you thought this was a terrible show, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us, everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text us, 484-243-0455. Mental is excited to see those pictures of your junk. Find us on Instagram and Twitter at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook under Everyone Racers, even Reddit slash E1R. So thanks again. And until next week, keep that shiny side up. Unless you've spent all the money on stupid things so there is no shiny side, then just keep those wheels down. Hold on. Sorry, I thought I stopped it. Now I... Okay. <laughs>